you know, let your life be dictated and live for those people that are closest to you. That's how I deal with the criticism. You know, it's irrelevant to me. Over here on these other questions that were posted in there, there was one that I wanted to answer because, I mean, to be completely transparent, they they posted they, they purchased a lot of stuff last week from Elite FTS to support us and did make a mention. I want to ask a question, and the question dealt with criticism on social media and why I'm not on social media like I used to be. The time thing's a big part of that. You know, it's, I was spending way too much time on social media because I thought there was more of a return on that than what it really was. And I'm not talking just the financial return, just a return in general of, you know, how many people it's helping and what degree it's helping and who it's helping and all those kind of things. And then when, when you start to balance that out to the amount of time, when I'm talking the amount of time, I was just answering the questions or the DMs on Instagram. That was easily two hours a day, every single day. And then I did a Q&A on Instagram. This was for several years, a Friday Q&A on Instagram that I don't want to say it took the hours that I'm going to say, but it would start Friday like at five and then I'd finally finish them up Saturday, like around 10. So it's kind of like a constant process of all that. And that was just there. But then there was a daily blog and articles and, you know, the stuff for YouTube and a lot of the videos on YouTube weren't doing anything. So it's just a lot. It was, it was probably 40 hours a week. And then when you look at who that's helping, how many people that's helping, what difference it's making it, there's got to be a balance there and it's got to be a balance that's going to legitimately help, you know, more people and the right people, you know, people that actually care, you know, and want to get better. And with all that, because I've been doing that to some degree, probably 30 hours a week since I started this company in 98. And I still do a lot now. It's just not to the same degree and in the same ways that people would see now. I'm, I'm, I'm making that point not to try to brag about millions of questions I've answered and all this other stuff. I don't need to do that. People can go look for themselves and see what I've been able to do. What I'm doing from that is I've also seen the backside of that, the criticism, the trolls, and you know all this other kind of stuff. And what the best way to look at this is, and it's a little morbid, so... I'm going to assume everybody that's listening to this at some point in time has been to a wake or a showing of somebody that's passed, either somebody dear to you, somebody close to you. And, you know, people that maybe weren't so much and you just showed up out of respect, not the funeral, the, the showing. When you're in the showing, I mean, no disrespect by this in any way, but when you're in the showing, you know, you got the person in the casket who's passed. Then closest to them, those people standing around, follow me. I, I got a point here I'm going to make. Those people standing around are the people who, they're hurt. I mean, they just lost somebody that was close to them. So they're, they're hurt. You know, they're, for a, lot of, for a lot of reasons, they're why, you know, the other people are showing up. As you move further back into the room, you'll, you start to find the people that are a little bit closer you know, their family members, their, you know, siblings of the people that are closest to the casket. And they're there to support those people that are that are grieving, that are hurting. Then as you move back, you got people that are showing up out of respect. And I'm not by anybody that's showing up is, you know, it's a good thing. They're all showing respect. And that's that's a good thing. But the further you move back in the room. You got a lot of people that the conversation shifts, you know, it's maybe a couple minutes about, you know, the person that passed, but then it's like, well, you know, how long do we need to be here? And anybody that's listened to me know exactly what I'm talking about. Cause you've either, either done it, heard it. So, you, you know, it's like, well, you know, it's five minutes, 10 minutes. I mean, so, it, and that just proceeds to keep moving that way. There's people outside of that room. Right. Who they're not even there. They they experience the loss as well. And so far, my point is people spend too much time caring about the people in the back of the room and outside of the room. 
And they're doing that to the expense of the people who are in the front of the room. The people in the front of the room will think about you every single day they are alive after you've passed. That Think of people that you lost that are close to you. You think about them every freaking day, every week. And the way that you're honoring them in the life that you're living right now is spending all your time giving way too much attention to people who are not even in the room. They're not even in the room enough to even give respect to the people that are in the room. So when you start getting upset about shit, people are going to say on social media and they're, they're going to say or hearsay and all this other stuff. Remember, they're not even in the room. So why are you going to let your life be dictated by that? You know, let your life be dictated and live for those people that are closest to you. That's how I deal with the criticism. You know, it's irrelevant to me. It means nothing. There, it, 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 it's, it's, that's how it should be. You know, that way you build better relationships with those people that are in the room because that, that's living.